Hi, my name is Dr. Sandra Dorman, and I'm the director of the Center for Research in Occupational Safety and Health. Today, on the Northern Ontario Community Immunity Series, we'll be talking about assessing the risks and benefits between vaccination and exposure to COVID-19. To see the entire series, please visit our website at crosh.ca. First, COVID-19 is much more contagious within a community than the flu is. That's because the flu has been around for a really long time. And so on any given year, there's some level of immunity within the community in terms of the spread of the flu. COVID-19 is a brand new virus. And so when it comes into community, it spreads very rapidly from person to person. And so your risk of getting it when it's in your community is much higher. And then if we look at, okay, well, how sick do you become when you get COVID-19? Well, a good way to examine illness is to look at how likely you are to go to hospital if you contract the disease. In 2009, there was a pretty serious flu outbreak in Ontario. And so if you look at the number of people that landed in hospital in that flu year, compared to the number of people that landed in hospital uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, you'll see it's about six times higher for the COVID-19 pandemic than a serious flu year. The bottom line is, is that when you get COVID, you have a high chance of becoming quite ill. And because of that, you see more people going into hospital than you normally would with the flu. And related to that, you see more people being admitted into the intensive care unit uh, than you would typically. And if you look at the length of time that they're spending in hospital, it's typically much longer than they would have spent in the hospital if they just had the flu. So all of which is to say that some people get COVID get incredibly sick. And of course, some people when they get COVID die. Globally, more than 4.7 million people have died from this disease. And this includes more than 9,600 Ontarians. I think we can conclude that COVID is a serious infection that has high risks for any individual. When the outbreak first started happening, the chance of a, a person getting COVID and getting sick was, was fairly equal within a community. But now that vaccines are available, we've seen that really shift. And so right now, the majority of Ontarians who are getting symptoms of COVID, who are ending up in hospital, and who are then being admitted to the intensive care unit are unvaccinated Ontarians. The second consideration around risk for contracting COVID-19 is this new aspect of the disease, which is called the long COVID or a post COVID-19 condition. This is where people who had the COVID-19 virus continue to experience ongoing symptoms. And the symptoms are fairly broad. They can include general fatigue, a lack of energy, chronic pain, a shortness of breath, ongoing anxiety and depression. And it actually doesn't matter whether they had severe COVID illness or actually were, were very mild or asymptomatic. So it's, it's very difficult to predict who's going to develop the long COVID symptoms. And right now, we don't know what the average period of time is before these long symptoms go away. We do know that right now between 57 and 78,000 Ontarians are reporting the symptoms of long COVID and that it's having a serious impact on their ability to return to work, to return to sort of what their normal daily life was prior to contracting the disease. So if we compare that now to vaccination, first, we know that vaccines are highly effective at preventing severe illness, hospitalization, and admittance to the ICU. Globally, billions of people have been vaccinated, and that includes over 10 million people within Ontario. And although short-term immune responses are common with, with the most common symptoms from vaccination being pain in the arm, a fatigue for a few days, sometimes headache or, or muscle aches. Those symptoms are relatively mild and resolve within days. We also acknowledge that 
a severe side effect is possible, but it's very rare. And actually in the Canadians that have been vaccinated, of the millions of doses, fewer than 0.01% of people have reported a severe effect of the vaccine. And these are typically well managed at this point by our hospital and healthcare system. And so if you balance the risk of actually contracting the illness, surviving the illness, and then a long COVID on top of that with the very small risk of a severe adverse effect, there's much more risk in your community right now associated with COVID-19 uh, disease than there is with the vaccine. Hopefully that helps clarify for you comparison of risks and benefits between the two. Next up on the community immunity series is how you can protect yourself against COVID-19. And I'd like to acknowledge that the Northern Ontario Community Immunity Series was funded by the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council.